The following will illustrate the one-time installation procedure necessary to adopt the Cybex 6000 to accept the TEF modular component. Remove all shipping and banding materials from the TEF modular component. Locate the two holes in the front base frame rail of the side of the Cybex 6000 to which the TEF modular component will be mo mounted opposite of the monitor. These holes may have plastic plugs or screw caps covering them. Remove as necessary. Slide a flat washer and then a screw cap washer onto each of the hex head screws. Slide one of the screws with the flat washer and the screw cap washer through one of the slots in the docking post plate. Hold the backing plate against the rear of the front base frame rail in line with the existing holes. Position the docking post against the front base frame rail. Slide the screw through the base frame rail and thread it into the backing plate. The screw should be installed finger tight only. Install the remaining screw through the second hole in the docking post, base frame rail, and into the backing plate. Tighten the screw finger tight. Position the docking post so that the plate is even with the top edge of the base frame rail. With a half inch wrench, snug the two screws so that the post is held in place, but may be moved. Position the TEF modular component docking clamp against the docking post. Position the plate so that there is an even amount of grooved area on the post above and below the clamp. With a half inch wrench, fully tighten the two hex head screws. Push the clamp assembly of the TEF modular component onto the docking post. Power up the Cybex 6000 and set it to manual mode. Set the dynamometer speed to 30 degrees per second and then move the all range of motion stop to 34 and secure and move the X range of motion stop to 36 and secure. Position the dynamometer input tube vertically so that the end of the locking knob and pull button is pointing up. Hold the dynamometer input tube in that position. Return the dynamometer speed to zero degrees per second. With a 9 16 inch wrench, loosen the four hex head screws at the bottom along the sides to the rear of the TEF modular component. Loosen the dynamometer pedestal and raise the dynamometer to 12 or higher on the dynamometer height indicator. Move the TEF modular component input arm assembly fully forward. Rotate the dynamometer and pull the TEF modular component towards each other. Position both so that the dynamometer input tube is directly above the docking adapter. The TEF modular component docking adapter and the Cybex 6000 dynamometer input arm will require four aft alignment. Do not push down on the dynamometer during this adjustment. Slide the TEF modular component fore aft until the input adapter will slide into the dynamometer input tube when pushing down on the dynamometer. Hold the dynamometer input arm in its position and set the dynamometer speed to 30 degrees per second. While holding the input arm vertically, push down on the dynamometer. The TEF modular component docking adapter should slide into the dynamometer input arm. If not, it will be necessary to realign the TEF modular component for aft position. With the dynamometer as far down as it can go, maintain hand pressure and finger tighten the docking adapter locking knob. Fully tighten the dynamometer pedestal. Rotate the TEF modular component input arm assembly to its full upright position against the rear stops. Fully tighten the docking adapter locking knob. With the 9 16 inch wrench, tighten the four hex head screws along the sides of the rear of the TEF modular component. Move the TEF modular component input arm assembly through the range of motion several times. It should be free of any binding. For further and complete instructions, refer to the written installation instructions included with the TEF modular component. 
TEF modular component is designed to test and rehabilitate the trunk flexors and extensors. The TEF modular component assesses strength in the sagittal plane. The movement occurs around a functional axis of rotation located at L5, S1. The hallmark features of the TEF modular component are based upon thousands of hours of clinical research and clinician input from the standalone TEF unit. These features include the curved chest pad, superior stabilization, including our patented three-point stabilization of the lower extremities, and maintenance of, the, of a standing position. The standing position was chosen because it maintains the normal orientation of the spinal curves, especially lumbar lordosis. It reflects functional vertebral positioning and simulates the way muscle groups act together during functional movement using the muscles which cross the hip in addition to the muscles of the trunk. Also, standing reduces the intradiscal pressure that's associated with sitting. The TEF modular component utilizes the same software as your Cybex 6000, so there's nothing new for the clinician to learn. It requires no additional operating space when used with a fully configured Cybex 6000. To dock the TEF modular component, roll the component up to the 6000 unit so that the docking hitch is parallel to the docking post. Place your foot on the back of the docking hitch and push the hitch so that it clamps to the post. At this time, the post acts as a fulcrum and you can rotate the TEF modular component towards the 6000 dynamometer. Prior to docking the TEF modular component, make sure the Cybex 6000 seat is in the full aft position and the contralateral st limb stabilizer is up. Move the input arm on the TEF modular component to the fully forward position. Now loosen the 6000 dynamometer, rotate the dynamometer towards the TEF modular component and raise the dynamometer to an approximate level of 12. Adjust the dynamometer input tube to a vertical position. The tube should be facing up. And now pull the TEF modular component towards the Cybex 6000 dynamometer. Line the input tube with the Dyna docking adapter and then push the dynamometer down so that the Dyna docking adapter fits into the input tube. Now secure the dynamometer. Move the input arm back into the extension position and secure the knob on the Dyna docking adapter. To fully secure the TEF modular component, lock all three caster wheels. The docking of the TEF modular component is now complete and you're ready for patient setup. For proper patient setup, step-by-step -step instructions are located in the client's setup record. There is room to record each of the adjustments on the setup record. All adjustments can be made from either side of the TEF modular component. At this time, I'd like to demonstrate a proper patient setup for you. First, have the patient step onto the foot plate. Place both heels firmly in the heel cuffs. You can raise or lower the foot plate as needed to align the axis of rotation of the patient with the mechanical axis of rotation of the TEF modular component. The mechanical axis of rotation is located at the rubber bumper. The patient's axis of rotation is at the L5-S1 level. To locate this, palpate the iliac crest. L5-S1 is located approximately an inch and a half distal to the iliac crest. Raise or lower the foot plates as needed to align the patient. Foot plate height can be recorded. All adjustments are scaled for reproducibility. Secure the pelvic belt loosely around the patient.
to adjust the popliteal pad, push the popliteal locking lever, and then you can move the popliteal pad up and down as necessary. The popliteal pad should be located just behind the patella in the popliteal fossa. This places the knees in slight flexion in order to reduce stress on the hamstrings to allow full trunk flexion of the patient. To lock the lower extremities in place, first insert the thigh pad. The thigh pad goes in the upper tube, push in on the thigh pad and push up on the lever to lock. Then insert the tibial pad. The tibial pad goes into the bottom tube. Push down on this lever to lock. Next, adjust the seat fore aft to align the anterior posterior axis of rotation. This axis is located at the intersection of the L5, S1, and mid axillary line. To adjust the seat fore aft, turn the seat fore aft wheel located in the back of the TEF modular component. As you move the seat forward, it will snug the pelvic belt. Following this, check to make sure the pelvic belt is completely snug. Next, adjust the scapular pad. The scapular pad should be located just distal to the spine of the scapula. To make this adjustment, turn the scapular pad handle. And finally, to stabilize the trunk, hand the patient the curved chest pad. Insert the buckle into the flat metal end. And then tighten the belts on both sides. To ensure that your axis of rotation is accurate, have the patient perform several repetitions. If the axis is incorrect, there will be movement of the patient along the seat pad. In order to set your anatomical zero, you will have the patient in the full upright position. To undock the TEF modular component from the Cybex 6000, loosen the dynamometer pedestal. and then loosen the knob on the DynaDocking adapter. Move the input arm into the forward position and then lift up on the dynamometer until the input arm disengages from the DynaDocking adapter. Unlock the three caster wheels and then pull the TEF modular component until it's in line with the Cybex 6000 seat. To disconnect the TEF modular component from the base of the 6000, move the hitch release bar towards you and then pull the TEF modular component until it disengages from the post. For complete written instructions, please refer to your user's guide. Prior to isokinetic testing on the TEF modular component, it's essential that the clinician perform a thorough patient evaluation. Factors which need to be addressed include a full patient history, range of motion, pain level and pain rages, irritability of condition, general health, specific musculoskeletal problems, growth strength deficits, and cardiovascular status. The results of the evaluation will indicate if isokinetic testing or rehabilitation is necessary. Indications for isokinetic testing or rehabilitation include, but are not limited to, the following. Weakness, deconditioning, or imbalance of trunk musculature, 
overall deconditioning, long-term combination lower extremity and trunk dysfunction, and unresolving musculoskeletal symptoms. If isokinetic testing is indicated, the clinician may perform a complete isokinetic test, which consists of a variety of speeds at maximal effort, or a modified test protocol, which includes limited speeds and intensity according to the limitations of the patient. If necessary, the clinician may de determine to defer the testing to a later date. Contraindications to testing or rehabilitation are divided into two areas, absolute or relative contraindications. Relative contraindications should be considered in context to the examination findings and are subject to the clinician's discretion. Absolute contraindication to trunk isokinetic rehabilitation or testing is acute disc pathology in pregnancy. Relative contraindications include, but are not limited to, acute back pain, neurological signs, limited trunk range of motion less than 45 degrees, recent back surgery, osteoporosis, cancer, neck and upper thoracic problems, and cardiovascular conditions. The clinician can design a custom protocol to suit the needs of their individual patients. The test may consist of isometric, concentric, or eccentric muscle actions. The automated protocols enable the clinician to determine the test speed, repetitions, rest period, and range of motion of the patient. Slow speeds are considered from 30 to 60 degrees per second, and they allow the patient to catch the mach machine. At low speeds, there are greater compressive forces. Fast speeds from 90 to 150 degrees per second decrease joint compressive forces. The clinician determines the number of repetitions per test set. There are two types of test set, a torque set and work sets. A torque set includes five or fewer repetitions and the patient is able to produce maximum effort. With the work set, there are six or greater repetitions performed, and there is an element of fatigue. In addition to torque, work, and power data that is obtained during a torque set, our work set also includes fatigue and endurance data. A rest period is provided and determined by the patient's level of conditioning and the duration of sets. The optimal rest period is 90 seconds. Range of motion can be limited and is based upon patient tolerance. The range of motion should allow for comfortable movement of the patient. The clinician should record patient setup on the setup record for higher test, retest, reproducibility. All computer applications are identical to the 6000 and are explained fully in the 6000 user guide. Prior to testing, it is important to include a warm-up session utilizing the Fitron or UBE to raise muscle temperature. The warm-up should include a cardiovascular session working below 70% maximum heart rate. The warm-up should also include a stretching period to stretch the muscles which will be involved in the testing. The goals of the warm-up are to increase circulation and oxygen supply, stretch the involved muscles, fine-tune of motor skills, and a psychological preparation for testing. During testing, it's very important that the clinician monitor and record the patient's vital signs, color, quality of movement, degree of motivation or effort during testing. Following the test, a cool down period should be provided for the patient, which would include low intensity repetitions, a brief rest, stretching, 
and cardiovascular activity using the Fitron or UBE at below 70 percent maximum heart rate. The goals for the cool down are to prevent venous pooling, reduce stiffness following the workout, promote conversion of metabolites, and allow psychological winding down following the test procedure. Isokinetics provides several unique benefits for spinal rehabilitation of your patient. Isokinetics loads the muscle maximally at each point in the range of motion for more efficient strengthening, unlike isotonics, which load a muscle at its weakest point in the range of motion. Isokinetics have a built-in safety factor because patient effort controls the resistance generated by the TEF modular component, thus the patient will never meet more resistance than they produce. Isokinetic resistance totally accommodates to pain. Isokinetic totally accommodates to fatigue. Cybex allows for training at a full range of speeds from 0 to 500 degrees per second. Isokinetics eliminate ballistic movements due to overcoming inertia. In addition to these unique features of isokinetics, the Cybex TEF modular component isolates the trunk flexors and extensors for more efficient muscle strengthening. The TEF modular component ensures correct axis alignment to ensure patient safety. Stabilization of all non-moving body parts will prevent substitution from other muscle groups along with increasing reliability and patient safety. The clinician has the ability to limit range of motion in each direction to meet the needs of the patient. The computer provides excellent motivational biofeedback for the patient. The Cybex 6000 and the TEF modular component allow the clinician to choose CPM or continuous passive motion, eccentric or active assist modes, as well as traditional concentric isokinetic resistance. CPM can be used to provide a gentle passive warm-up for the patient, providing smooth range of motion at speeds from 1 to 120 degrees per second. If desired, the patient can assist the movement of the input arm for general active assist exercise. Isometric exercise provides angle-specific static muscle contraction. The TEF modular component allows the clinician to choose multiple angles as well as direction of force. Traditional concentric-concentric rehabilitation stresses the trunk flexors and extensors in a reciprocal fashion, causing a muscle shortening action at speeds ranging from 5 to 500 degrees per second. Concentric-eccentric or reciprocal eccentric-eccentric exercise applications are available in the powered mode. The eccentric muscle action stresses the non-contractile component of the muscle. Eccentric muscle actions are considered to be more functional and used in everyday activities of daily living. Eccentric speeds are from 5 to 120 degrees per second. The computer application for isokinetic spinal rehabilitation using the TEF modular component is identical to that of the Cybex 6000. For complete written information on accessing the exercise mode, consult your 6000 user's guide. Cybex backtesting reports use specific terminology. These terms can be correlated to specific functional requirements. Understanding these terms, and therefore the significance of the data you are collecting, will enable you to optimally assess your patients and to develop rehabilitation programs that meet their functional needs. Following a test, you need to analyze the shape of the curves. A torque curve is produced from both trunk flexion and trunk extension. The trunk flexor curve is located on the left and the trunk extensor curve is located on the right. Torque is plotted along the y-axis and range of motion is plotted along the x-axis. When reading the extensor curve, it is read from right to left. When reading the flexor curve, it is read from left to right. 
Analyzing the extensor curve, when the patient is in a flex position, the hips have a mechanical advantage. Thus, extension is initiated by the forceful contraction of the hamstrings and the gluteus maximus. As the patient continues to move into extension, the hip muscles lose their advantage and the erector spinae and deep paraspinal muscles gain advantage, bringing the trunk into full extension. Thus. The movement is initiated by the forceful contraction of the hamstrings and the gluteus maximum, and as the movement proceeds, the paraspinal muscles dominate. This has been documented by EMG analysis. The exact firing sequence in the flexor curve is less clear since the hip flexors are inaccessible to surface EMG. The curve tends to be bread loaf shaped and is a result of the torque produced by the hip flexors and the abdominal muscles. Once the data has been stored in the computer, it is processed in the same manner as the data from the extremities. Post-processed data consists of a maximum points curve, which is the maximum torque produced at each half a degree in the range of motion, an average points curve, which is the average torque produced at each half a degree in the range of motion, and a best work rep, which is the one repetition in which the patient performed which has the greatest area underneath the torque curve. In physics terminology, torque represents a twisting force. It is a measure of force of a rotational movement expressed by the equation torque equals force times distance, where distance indicates the distance from the input of force to the center of rotation. The amount of torque that can be produced is most directly related to musculotendinous tension levels, joint contact forces, and in some cases, joint translation forces. Peak torque is indicative of the maximum muscular tension capability taking into account changes due to biomechanical leverage and the muscular length tension relationship that occur throughout the range of motion. Peak torque is also reported as a percentage of body weight. Clinical experience has shown this ratio to be a valuable tool for making inter-individual comparisons. The ratio can be reported at every speed tested. The computer program enables you to analyze the angle at which peak torque occurs. It also allows you to analyze torque measurements at angles other than the angle of peak torque. If you note points in the initial torque curves that are affected by injury or pathologies, you may wish to evaluate progress at those points during subsequent tests. Acceleration time is a measure of the time from the initiation of movement until the patient meets the preset speed. In a maximal effort, this is dependent upon the patient's recruitment capability, fiber type distribution, neuromuscular inhibition, and intramuscular viscosity. The acceleration time is noted by the flat line at the first part of the curve and is representative of the free limb acceleration. Work is defined by the equation work equals force times distance. Work describes the area underneath the torque curve. Literally, work is defined as the energy required to move one pound, one foot, and is measured in foot pounds. For work measurements to be comparable, the same range of motion must be used for every test. It documents the maximum work output over the entire range of motion and therefore presents a more accurate picture of the patient's ability than simply peak torque. If you look at these two curves, you will notice that the peak torques are comparable. However, the area underneath the dotted curve is much greater than the area underneath the solid curve and thus represents a larger amount of work. Total work performed is dependent on the patient's muscular power capability at the test speed as well as available anaerobic energy stores and pH tolerance in the working muscles.
This information is used in conjunction with the endurance ratio to evaluate the patient's work out output capability and rate of fatigue. Power is equal to work per unit time, specifically the total work done in the repetition divided by the contraction time. It is measured in watts. Average power, computed in the best work rep, is a measurement of the actual intensity of muscle work. Power increases as speed increases and levels off at a speed that is specific to the individual. The speed at which the average power measurement is the highest is the maximum intensity exercise speed or peak power velocity for that individual. Notice the inverse relationship between power and work. As velocity increases, work decreases and power increases. TAE or torque acceleration energy is the work in the first one-eighth of a second. It indicates the muscular explosiveness. Endurance is the ability to withstand stress. It is expressed as the ratio of the total work performed in the first half of the repetitions to that performed in the last half of the repetitions. This information is only given in a work set or when greater than six repetitions are selected. A patient's total work capability and endurance ratio are more than a function of absolute strength over time and repetitions. They are directly related to such factors as energy stores within the muscle, energy supply pathways and chemical conversion resynthesis efficiency, local circulatory volume and efficiency, and intramuscular lactate or pH tolerance. All comparative data are described as ratios. On the TEF modular component, opposing muscle group ratios are calculated by dividing the flexion score by the extension score and multiplying that times 100. And they are expressed as the ratio of flexors to extensors. The ratio is indicative if there is any muscle imbalance. The trunk extensor should be stronger than the flexors, thus a ratio greater than 100% is desirable. Range of motion is defined by the protocol chosen by the clinician and is limited by computer stops. Accurate data interpretation requires that range of motion be strictly limited, otherwise data will be difficult to interpret. of the TEF modular component, in addition to the Cybex 6000, is necessary to ensure the accuracy of your data. Cybex recommends that you verify the calibration of the TEF modular component on a monthly basis. Detailed instructions for calibration and verification are in the Cybex software. These can be found under System Utilities under TEF modular component calibration. The first step is to move the mechanical range of motion stop X to 9 and O to 62. When the stops are secured, press F12. Next, move the scapular pad down as far as possible and lock it in place. Then secure the calibration T-bar adjacent to the scapular pad adjustment. When the T-bar is secured, press F12. Wait for the tone and then move the input arm to position zero. When it's reached the zero position, it will lock in place. Then press F12 and the input arm will drop. When it's complete, it will tone. Wait for the tone. Upon hearing the tone, press F12 and move the, the input arm back to position zero. 
At this time, the input arm is locked in place. You need to load the calibration T-bar with 75 pounds of weight. Place 25 pounds on one side of the calibration T-bar and 50 pounds on the other. Each of these weights are certified to weigh exactly 25 pounds apiece. They are only to be used during your calibration. When you've loaded the weights, press F12 again, staying clear of the TMC while it drops the input arm with the 75 pounds of weight. When the unit tones, your calibration is complete. Upon hearing the tone, remove the weights and the calibration T-bar. Consult your user's guide for a complete written description.